say, I'm killing it as a teacher. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sawdust and Chrome. This project, and I know I say it all the time, is one of the best. It is a folding laptop table. Easy to store, has so many uses like this. Yes! Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about this one in particular is it introduces the kids to a number of different processes. The top, I tied it up to you, but here at school, we just make them out of 12 mil plywood. Um, nice and cheap. Easy to do, and you can cut up a class set, doesn't take too long. For the legs and frames, the rail, we use 42 by 18 millimeter pine. Um, again, material wise, you guys can choose what you want, but try to stick to the sizes, it'll make it easier. I've provided instructions and plans, you can't get it wrong. My shout out is to the House of Wood, uh, it's something I stumbled across online. And I love the idea and I'm stealing it. Also have to give a shout out to one of my favorite students, Logan. He was the one who put me onto it. He's the inspiration behind it. Hardware. Introduces you guys to some hardware. Equipment we're gonna use. We're gonna use the drill press, the band saw, sanders, the, um, the drop saws, uh, a variety of things. So um, whatever you've got at home, you can make it suit. Please make sure you're nice and safe. And I think that's about it. Oh, of course, if you love what we're up to, please do the like, subscribes, spread the word. Um, it really means a lot to my family to have you guys involved. So join the Sawdust and Chrome family. All right, I think that's it. Peace and love. All right, first of all, our top is 530 by 360. Um, stick to the sizing as best you can. If you tweak it a little bit, you're gonna to have to take note that your leg measurements might have to change a bit. Worst thing is if they fold in and they can't fold because they touch. So just be aware. Um, so size-wise for the top, we're done. If you get lost at all, use this for instructions. So we're gonna do the support rails around it. We're gonna do a handle because I love it when we store it, they're easy to grab. But what we will do is we're going to pre-drill into the side, into the long rails. Um, it's easy to do it now and it makes sense down the track. So we're going to head across to the drop saw. Oh, we'll mark it out first, then we'll get to the drop saw. While we're at it, I want to mark out these guys too. Out of this to note, it's a 15 degree angle. So let's go do our rails and cut all our legs up. Um, marking out first. Even though these guys are pre-cut, I would still take my measurements exactly off this. Don't trust it's exactly the 530, 360. So I need two long rails. Make sure you leave the three mil for your saw blade or whatever it is you're cutting with. Um, with the width, even though it's 360, don't measure your 360 and cut it at 360 because you've got to take into account the thickness of the two long rails. So I'm going to go chop those, come back and we'll do the other two. With all the drop saw stuff, if you're new to the drop saw and you've got one, please check out my videos. One of them is a comprehensive one, everything you need to know. And one of them is a quick five minute safety only video to keep you out of trouble. Like always, we don't want to bust something we can't grow back, so 
check out the drop saw video if you need to. So they're good. Make sure you hold it flush. And we need two of these. So that's the outside. That'll be my short rails. Only go cut two of them. I'll be back. So just check your handiwork. That looks pretty good. So they're going to be fine. Now, let's collect these bits. I want to grab those two. Don't worry about the supports yet. Just grab the legs. So I've set this up, my um, sliding bevel at 15 degrees. So one will be 15 degree, one end. And the height of them is One more. Uh, let's go chop that up. All right, now the marking out. While I was over there, these are the two supports for our legs. So for now I don't need to do anything with them. Our four legs. That's my 15 degree angle. I need to curve this. Ideally find something that's nice and round, the same width. This is pretty close. So I want you to be real fussy, nice and accurate. Sharp pencil. We're going to um, nick these off on the drop saw, uh, on the band saw, and then we we'll use our linisher. We're going to round these nicely. Remember, anything to do with curves, your fingers, your hands should love it. Should be nice to touch. Also, while I'm here, we're going to mark the hole. in our leg for our nut, for our nuts and bolts. Sorry, can you see that? So we're gonna mark the hole through here and the hole for that. So these are 42 wide. So I'm gonna find my halfway, 21. So I'm gonna come in 21, down 21. Center. And this is my 21. So I might grab a sliding, uh, not sliding, a marking gauge. So, if you're using a marking gauge and you're new to it, 
Make sure your timber is up against um, the fence. I don't know what they call the, the, the head of it. Give yourself a little scratch. You rotate it to check you're still in the middle. And then give it a little scratch from the top. So tiny little crosses, you should say. I'm also a fan of, uh, use the spike. Give yourself like a little, uh, I guess a center point. So when we're on the drill press, it'll be even easier for our drill to locate. So 21 in, 21 in, so it's halfway. 21 down is perfect. On the long ones, you have to be super fussy with these. Super fussy, please take your time. I want you to come in 45 millimeters from the edge. So you've come in 45. Importantly, super important, I want you to come up 20 mil. Got to be 20. That gives us a one mil clearance when it comes together for these guys. Don't forget, I've come up 20 from that edge, so we've got to come up 20 from that edge. Don't get it the other way around. So we're going to adjust this a tiny bit. So this is all the marking out for our drill press. So they're marked, they're marked. Now these guys. So these two, I'm gonna do our handles. So I reckon the easiest way is to find the center. That's the center mark. Then from the center, I normally come out five each way. So I've got 10 centimeters in the center of the, um, in our piece. And come up 20. So we've already set this at 20. You should be able to scratch yourself a line. So that's going to come out. Now, it's totally up to you what design you want to do. You could, by all means, cut it out nice and square. Um, I might actually give us a curve. So I might use the force in a bit to give myself a nice round curve and then I'll use the rest of it on the band saw. So, I'll show you in a sec, but I'm a fan of scribble out whatever you, whatever's coming out. 
So I'm going to use the centre point on our force nib here and my eye to line up exactly where I want this to go. Yeah. About there. So, got my two points. I'm going to do them together like a sandwich and then you're going to see me um, use a sacrificial bit under that one. I think that's all the marking out done. Awesome job guys. Dad joke time. You guys know I'm a tea drinker, but what do you call a sad cup of coffee? A despresso? <laughs> oh, that one's not great. All right, leave a comment. Let's get back into it. This stuff's important. All right, welcome to the drill press. I love the drill press. If you're new to it, check out one of my, uh, the safety video on it. Um, it'll keep you out of harm's way. Drill press, cordless drill, as long as you're nice and accurate and upright, it'll be fine. But I've got one, so I'm silly not to use it. These drill bits, I hope you can see it. I think they're called Brad Point drill bits. It's got the, um, I guess the center point. It's super accurate for timber only. Um, I find these help the kids at school and, well, helps me as well. So this is perfect. It's a smidge bigger than the bolt, so we're laughing. You're gonna see me use this guy, and then you're gonna see me use the force in a bit. So um, that's it. Enough chat from me, let's get into it. If you're new to the bandsaw, sorry I harp on about it, but check out the safety videos I've done. It's super important to me that you guys are nice and safe. Um, that's it. Let's get into it. Um, there's nothing clever about this. I'm going to take out the waist side of everything, uh, trim a little bit off the curves just so my sander doesn't have to do all the work. Um, stay safe, people. It's important to me. With your sanding options, obviously whatever gear you've got at school or at home um, is going to work. We're lucky enough to have a little bit of gear here at school. If I was at home, I've got a little disc sander I would have used. Um, whatever suits you guys, just go nuts. The idea is we want everything nice, schmick, we want our hands to like it. Um, I'm going to give it a quick hit here on the downdraft table while my components are separate. It's easier now than later on. So, rock out a little bit and we'll, uh, I'll get into this. The next bit I want you to kind of, I want you to be careful, I want you to take your time. Especially if you're one of my students, because I will mark you harshly. But we're going to attach the sides, the shorts, the longs. Make sure, you know how we measured up 20 mil? Make sure you've measured up the 20 mil is at the bottom. Don't have it flipped the other way, it's 20 mil down. So if you need to, scribble a little line on it, write on it, glue here. Make sure you've got your head around it. So it's 20 up from the bottom. Um, that's kind of the only crucial bit. Oh, totally up to you guys how you fix it. We're going to just glue it and clamp it. You could glue it, you could nail gun it, you could screw it. I don't mind. Um, I like just the glue. I like that the top stay clean, but totally up to you. I'd love to see some photos of some of the ones you guys do. So, let's get into it. Thank 
Now, I've said it a million times in my classes, when you glue stuff up, you have to be happy to walk away from it because in half an hour, whatever you've glued up is exactly how it stays. I've seen too many awesome projects kind of get ruined after weeks of work with just the glue up stage. So uh, I, I hope you like what you've done. Um, if I was in a class, I would only glue up like kind of, maybe the long sides, one lesson, short sides, the next lesson, just because we don't have enough clamps, you've got to share them around a bit. Um, whatever you guys do, just make sure you've nailed it. While that kind of dries, we can kill a couple hours. Um, I might grab myself a cuppa, have some lunch, but I might also, um, I want to show you how we put the legs and the support rails together. Again, it's another thing that's totally up to you how you do it, um, but I'll show you how we do it here at school. That's it. All right, get out of here. Everyone deserves a cuppa. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, it's all glued, rock hard, sanded, schmick, nice to touch, uh, ready to go for the legs. For this part, for these guys, it's totally up to you how you want to join them. What we do is we put a couple of dowel pins in there, a couple of pieces of timber dowel. Um, I'm going to show you how that's done. Totally up to you. If you had the pocket hole joiner, you could put a couple of screws in the bottom. It's up to you. You could put a couple of nice screws through the side. Um, it needs something, but don't just rely on glue. Um, end grain gluing is never kind of amazing on its own. So, oh, I'm going to do the hardware. So I'm going to show you how to cut the bolts, trim them, chamfer them so they work. And I'm going to introduce these guys. They're called Dow Center Point Marks. Dow Marking Center Points when you're going for them in the shop. They come in a variety of sizes, but they look like these. Um, they're super handy and a good excuse to go buy some more kit. Because um, you'll use them more than you realise. But I'll show you how we use them to mark out where our legs will meet the support rails. How we can get it schmick. Um, I think that's it. Drill bit suits these guys. These um, dowel pins we cut in half. They come in a variety of sizes. This is just what we've got here at school. So I know I've got to halve them. And I think that's it. So, welcome back into the workshop, let's go. Now that this is schmick, uh, I use carpet tiles here at school. Put it on something that you can, you, you can look after. So the legs. So the angle we want is like that. So that's there, 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 and there. So with our hardware, so it should fit through nicely. We should be able to swing that around. And if we've done it correctly and our markings out perfect, when I'll show you. When our leg hits the rail and our 15 degree should be perfect when it's flipped up. So while we're playing with hardware. So the bolts at the moment are way too long. I don't need them that long. So I'm gonna cut these down. Um, in the plans, I'll chuck in a note about how long they should be. But if I put everything where it goes and mark it with a sharpie so it sticks out just a smidge. So this is what I want to cut mine off at. So you're going to see me cut it with a hacksaw, but I still need to get that chamfer back so I can thread my bolts back on. 
uh, my nuts back onto the bolt. So I'm going to show you how I do it here in the workshop. Um, that's it, I need a hacksaw. Perfect. You don't need to watch me do the other three, but they'll all be the same length and you give it a slight chamfer so you can get your nut back on. So all of these thread on, they're all nice and short. And they're 46 long, 45. 45 would be perfect. With the two braces, once these two legs are just sitting inside, you want these to fit. And like half a mil wiggle is perfect. Uh, you don't want less and you don't want more because then it won't collapse down. The next part we do is we've got to line up. Oh, so we want to line up where I want to do my drilling for the ends of these. Cause we drill these first and then you'll see me use the pins in these to identify where these go. So. So first job, put all these in, but just do it loosely. You don't have to do them tight yet. Oh, and I forgot to mention, washers on the inside, use um, a bolt that's got a nice head to it, just for looks. It obviously doesn't matter what you use, but I like using these nylon nuts. It's got like the bit of nylon thread on it, so once they're kind of tightened up, they cannot undo. Um, they're perfect, I reckon. Works really well, because you'll be able to gauge how tight they are how easy your, um, your legs can come down. So, they're just nice and loose for now. As for the ends of these, I um, hope you can see it okay. But I'm gonna do a center line. kind of eyeball it. I want to come in. I need two. You have to have two. Sorry, I'll measure it in a sec. Yeah, so it's in the center and then I've come in one centimeter, 10 mil from the edges. Don't be too close to the outside because you've got to imagine this has got to be in there. And if you're too close to an edge of any sort, you're a chance of busting out. So down a centimetre, up a centimetre and through the centre. So I'm going to go drill these in the drill press. I've got this set just from previous accounts. Um, if you can imagine, I can go in so far... can go in so far until I'm getting close to busting out the leg. So that's my actual leg measurement. I'm going to work it out half of this. It's five. 
two and a half. It's going to go about there. So we should be fine the same depth into our leg and into our brace. That should be a little bit over half the width of this. Sorry, I hope that made sense. All right. Let's go do some drilling. Hot tip, before you do the drilling, give yourself a little center punch mark. Makes it heaps easy for the drill bit to locate. So use a screw, center punch, whatever you got lying around. Now at school we're lucky enough to have this jig from projects from years gone past. Um, whatever you can do to help keep this upright, the better. Um, if I didn't have this set up, I'd probably just do it in, the, uh, in a bench vise with a cordless drill. As long as you're upright, the best you can, uh, you'll be right. Let's take a break. History lesson for you. Did you know the first French fries weren't actually cooked in France? They were cooked in Greece. <laughs> All right, rate it out of 10, leave a comment. All right, let's go. So, <clears throat> I've halved the uh, dowels we're gonna use. Now the dowel pins, you can only do one end at a time because I can't put them in the other end and still get this exactly where I want. So we've worked out a bit of a cheat. These two magical blocks help us keep everything aligned. So they're 13 centimetres long. And they work well to line up where the brace is going to go. So these two blocks are my guide. Oh. I want you to do this. Super important. I want you to label everything. A, B, C, D. So no matter where your, where your um, kind of dowel pins have lined up, if you can see the letters, everything's corresponding where they should, you'll be right. So first one, is I want you to use these blocks as your guide. Gently push up against it. I got my two A's. Then I want you to push a little bit harder into it. And I hope you can see, but it's given me two, two little pinpoints from those guys. So that's my A. Let's do our B. Sorry, C. Same again, make sure they're good. Push into it. Make sure everything's flat.
Perfect. We just worked out that 13, gave us the brace in kind of a nice position. So we just kind of liked the distance we got from there. Push a bit harder. That's better. So now we're going to take our legs off because we're going to drill where these go with the same drill bit we just used and um, then we can glue those parts together. Oh, got it. Alright, back to the drill press. So there are our marks. We've got to go until the masking tape touches the top of the timber. I'm going to check. I like the depth. I might actually just set up the depth stop. So we can't go wrong. Next hot tip, this one because I don't want you to get caught out. So grab one of them, check the depth. So these dowels I've halved and I think they should be the right size. Push one in all the way. Find your corresponding B. And just check that it's going to finish flush. Sometimes if your dowel's too big, you'll be a little bit kind of open. You'll be proud. We, sorry, we don't want that. So make sure you've got a nice flush finish. That looks good. I only do one because they don't pull out really easy. So you might need some pliers. So for this one, I'm going to use a soft clamp, squeeze it up, a little bit of glue, the key for this one is make sure it stays flat. If it's a little bit raised for any reason, it puts a twist in how well your mechanism works. And when the thing folds up, we want it to be nice and flat. So make sure everything stays flush, flat. All right, you guys can rock out, I'll do some gluing. Awesome job, I'm happy to walk away from that. It's flat, it's square, we've checked it, I've checked it. Please make sure there's no twists or there's no um, high spots, make sure it's all nice and flat. You've got to be happy to walk away from it. I think that's all we can do today. I've got footy training in 20 minutes, so I've got to get out of here. But that'll be right for tomorrow. We can assemble it, final sand, done. Um, like always, thank you guys so much for being involved. 
Um, I love that you guys are a part of the family. All right, let's go kick the footy. Hey guys, welcome back. Moose, this is the best part. Last day, only like five minutes of work to do. We could put it all together and take home another Schmick project. Um, that's it. Make sure you've clicked all the likes and subscribes buttons. Let's get straight into it. Perfect. Fits, slides, and it's flush. Let's see how our other one goes. Yes, I couldn't have planned that any better. Didn't even have to fudge it at all. Nice work. So, um, line the holes up. Still should all be perfect. Make sure you use your washers. Please use those nylon nuts. They're the best. Remember, clockwise to tighten. So you want to just do them up tight enough so it grabs a hold, so it's nice to move, but we don't want it too loose that it falls, or too tight that it's just too hard to move around. I think I'm okay with that. So last bit, you guys can rock out. I'll tighten this up, give it a final sand just to get rid of some of our pencil. That's about it. Not too bad guys, beautiful job. My aim as always is, you take home an awesome project, you've got yourself some new skills, you bought yourself some new tools, and you can pass on some of the knowledge. My dream is, and it always has been, that you guys get to share what I do every day. Um, I want to share the love with you guys. I think that's about it. Don't forget to spread the word about the Sawdust and Chrome family. I want to build up our community. I want to um, invest in you guys. I think that's it. Get out of here. Oh, make sure you're working on projects. You cannot have enough projects on the go. More the merrier. Keep yourself busy and out of trouble. I think that's it. Peace and love. Even though you've pre-cropped, you can see it. I love these drill bits with the real sharp point. I got a feeling they're called Brad point drill bits. Or I might have made that, <laughs> mate. Damn it.